everyone. We are back here for a dynamic show for the Road to the Deep Dive Summit. Um, the It's Time to Go Deep Summit is the number one international transformational development summit, number one international development Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to have to come back and edit that out. Welcome to another dynamic show, um, the Road to the Deep Dive Summit. The it's Time to Go Deep Summit is the number one transformational development summit transforming urban markets, taking place January 13th through the 15th, 2022. So I've been having a time of a lifetime um, being able to interview some of our speakers um, and along the way, so that you get get an idea of who they are outside of the stage, understanding their background, getting their perspectives, their experiences, and really going deep into issues that matter to them. Because let's just face it, it's not just about them sharing theory and blueprint and system, but really understanding who they are behind the camera, as well as in front of the camera. Um, and we are celebrating our um, It's Time to Go Deep teen speakers doing this week. And so I'm excited to have a dynamic young lady um, as a part of the summit. And she is phenomenal at her very young age and she's accomplished so much. I can't wait to see um, what she does within the next 10 years. So I'm going to ask our guest today to come to the stage and introduce who she is before we go deeper um, into discussion about topics relevant to our today's youth, leaders, business, sports, and the list goes on and on. Come on to the front, young lady, and let everyone know who you are. Hello, everyone. My name is Haley Simons. I'm 15 years old. I'm the CEO of Health Test Enterprises. I have been advocating for urban youth in and through the sport of triathlon for seven years now. My business is a part of the Baltimore and Maryland Chamber of Commerce, and I am a part. I'm I'm also the the youth president of the NAACP Reynolds Town Youth Council of Baltimore County, and I am also a member of the NHHSS. That is phenomenal, and you have a lot going on already, leading um, in the community, it sounds like, leading in business, and another phenomenal, in, in, in a lot of areas, so help us to understand, um, what grade are you currently in, and what, how are your academics looking, um, what are some new trends that you're seeing as a student um, this year, are you currently in school? Are you doing virtual? Um, how are things going in your neck of the woods? So um, I am in 10th grade. My academics look like I'm in all APs in honors classes. Trends, I would have to say, news-wise, I would have to say about the Omicron and a lot of districts and counties have been having to go virtual. There's not that I recently haven't been seeing any trends in my generation. I mean, if I have known my classmates would have told me, but in trend news, I would have to say the Omicron and the the sickness cases going up, but yeah. Okay, great. And so when, um, how has school been this year? Are you currently on online? Are you hybrid? You know, how was last year as a freshman? Um, because I think you mentioned you're a sophomore right now. So how has education been thus far? Education so far has been challenging just a little bit only because it is it is my first year of high school in person virtually. Freshman year as a start off to high school wasn't that exciting since the COVID, since COVID-19 hit and it did kind of force us to go virtual for my whole freshman year. So that was fun. That was fun. And Academic wise, I'm doing good. Um, it's a good challenge for me because I know any ch any new challenges that are coming my way, I like to face them head on. And right now, I'm currently in school. I'm in school full time. Um, I'm not virtual, more hybrid. And yeah. 
Okay, great. And being coming back from a full year of online to in person, how was that transition for you? Um, and how did you overcome some of those obstacles faced by not having been in school for a little over a year? Um, I will have to say since the past six months, I have been in school compared to being a full year online during freshman. It, I'm still trying to get used to it because I have been in front of the computer almost every day last year during my freshman year. Um, it's been a challenge. Um, I will say that I am still excited to go in person in school, but I am just worried a little bit because of the COVID-19 ca COVID case is rising. And there has been a lot of students out in my high school recently. So that is kind of me having on the edge a little bit. Um, the challenge, the techniques that I face and to use in person, I would have to say um, wise with my planner because my planner has been very helpful for me throughout the first half of this year virtual when it comes to taking AP and honors classes and just being around classmates and students who have the same classes as me. And I know that if I have any trouble, I can go from them for help, or if they have any trouble, they can come for me for help. And one of the benefits of being in school for me is if I have any questions, I can go up to the teacher um, secretly or raise my hand and ask them to come to me in class. Because virtual, it was kind of weird and awkward like raising my hand in front of a whole bunch of kids online that doesn't even have the cameras on and the only person that has the cameras on is the teacher and so it was a little awkward asking a question um virtually but now since I'm back in person it's much more comfortable to ask questions that I need help in if I don't understand a lesson topic or a question I may have hmm and, and I love how you broke it down from the online perspective versus the in-person perspective. Um, but if you had to have a choice, would you stay online or would you one hybrid or do you just uh, enjoy the full throttle of being back in person? I enjoy going back fully in person because um, during the freshman year, I did have some issues myself that wasn't really helping me as well in terms of focusing and learning and to fully grasp on my education. And plus, it kind of helps me not being in front of a screen 24-7, eight to nine hours a day, which would be fully like energy draining for me mentally and physically. And yeah, so I would have to choose going back fully in person because I get to interact with students or classmates I haven't seen before and also to engage in activities so that I can get the learning education that I need. Absolutely, and love how you broke that down so that every point one can understand. So I heard you talk about you having a business and your business being a part of a local in-state chamber of commerce. Congratulations with that. And can you tell everyone that's paying attention or is listening to this podcast or watching this um, this interview, can you tell us a little about your business and what motivated you to start your business? So as I mentioned before, my business is called Hail Sets Enterprises. What my business offers is photography services and coaching services. In terms of um, photography services, I cover all aspects of the spectrum when it comes to headshots, portfolios, um, if you need senior portraits, if you need pictures done to revamp your website, I'm the girl for you. And coaching services, I do swimming, cycling, and running. I cover all aspects of that. And what motivated me to start my business was, um, as I mentioned before, me and my siblings um, have been co-founding a club called IBT Geomont Sport Club for the last seven years. And we have all also been an advocate for urban youth and urban communities in terms of um, triathlons and helping to underrepresent communities like such. And what motivated me to start it was, um, 
I knew that I've been sharing a platform with my siblings for so long, and I felt like I needed to um, spread my wings a little bit and become Little Miss Independent herself, so that not just her using her platform for services, but also for me to use my platform to also spread about the awareness that's going on with um, African Americans like me, so that I can reach a broad, bigger audience to other people, so they know that what I'm what I'm doing in my community and how it has been benef been beneficial for others. So that's pretty deep for uh, for a person so um, young in age, but wise in wisdom. And so congratulations for you on that. And so you talked about triathlons. Can you help us to understand what that is? So triathlons is a three multidiscipline sport. It's swimming, cycling, and running. In triathlon competitions, it's cycling first. You do um, amount of amount of many miles or yards you have to do. There are two kind of um, swimming portions that you would have to do. Swimming in pool is more like immediate and um, beginners and intermediate, and it's open water swim for more advanced swimmers or um, youth as like myself that has been in the sport for many years. So open water is a great way for us. And then it's bike biking that you do a certain amount of distance for, and then it all comes down to the running, which is the same amount of distance as well. Wow. And you said that you, you've been doing this for seven years. So how old are you again? I'm 15. You kind of old. You sound like you're a very old person in a sport, but you're very young at the same time. And so how exciting has it and continue to be um, for you to take part in a sport where you don't see many African-American or minority youth? It's, I would say in the beginning, it was kind of rough because at first, what sparked us to start the IBT GMOC Sport Club was the lack of not many youth like us in the sport. And ever since I have been growing up in the sport, ever since I was eight, I believe, I've been seeing um, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of more people or and youth like me in the sport participating in triathlons more and knowing that me growing up in the sport can have a good um, good pathway for me to go into college. That is amazing. And so um, where are you hoping to take this opportunity, you know, beyond your high school years? Where I would like to take this is into college. Um, they, there is a program program called the N, NAA, NCAA, I'm sorry, um, Women's Varsity Triathlon Program that is a full ride to help women in this sport like me to also do the same thing that we, that we do, not just in high school, but also in college as well. That sounds like a phenomenal opportunity. And so I guess for is triathlon just for people that can swim or can't swim? Are there other ways for people to get engaged, especially youth that may not have a, a swim background? There are definitely other ways for youth who don't come, come from a swim background to do triathlons. They are, uh, there are other alternatives to triathlons, like duathlons. Um, duathlons are a run, bike, run where you're where it incorporates no swimming at all. All you're doing is a two leg discipline sport. You do the running first, then the bike, then you do the run again. And if you don't like to run and you don't feel like getting on your feet and running all the time, there is another another alternative called the aquathon, which is a swim, run, swim where you swim first, then run, then you get back into the water again to swim for your last leg. Yeah, and have you taken part in all of these alternative disciplines outside of triathlons? And if so, which one is your favorite? Yes, I have. I have participated in all three types of triathlons, regular triathlons, aquathons, and duathlons. Um, my favorite, I would have to say, is just doing regular 
I actually have two favorites. One is the Aquathon because I don't have the bike. The bike is not my is not my strong suit, but I am working on it. But I would also say regular triathlons because I have been doing like regular triathlons of swimming, cycling, running for so long that I'm used to what kind of instant distance that they give me at triathlon competitions. And also Aquathons too, because I I don't do aquathons as much as I would as I used to do when I was little, but it is still a good opportunity to still do aquathons for me at least. Visionary leader Dr. Takima Dorsey presents the It's Time to Go Deep Summit, the number one international development summit transforming urban markets. The It's Time to Go Deep Summit is not a normal summit. It's a game-changing summit. The mission of the It's Time to Go Deep Summit is to provide personal development and business growth training to nonprofits, small businesses, and entrepreneurs while increasing resources to the urban market. The It's Time to Go Deep Summit is uniquely different because it is the only summit focused on transforming the urban market by providing training resources to leaders and managers so they can become the resources needed in their community, their industry, and themselves. The It's Time to Go Deep Summit speakers are experts in their industries and remain excited to serve, increase greater impact, and to leave the legacy they are destined to do, as did their ancestors. The It's Time to Go Deep Summit goal is to share proven methodology and best practices to current and aspiring leaders and managers for success in business and in life. The It's Time to Go Deep Summit's objective is to assist in the formulation of a blueprint framework, system, or process for attendees that evoke immediate action. Professional and personal training are ongoing goals needed for positive and transformational growth and development. The It's Time to Go Deep Summit focus is on closing the disparities and barriers that exist by meeting nonprofits, small business owners, and entrepreneurs where they are. The theme of this year's summit is learn what you don't know and teach what you do. Grab your free virtual ticket now at www.itstimetogodeepsummit.com. And, and that is phenomenal. So for those that are tuning in right now or listening to this podcast, we are speaking to one of our VIP team preneurs that will be taking part in our um, It's Time to Go Deep Summit, January 13th to 15th, um, 2022. If you haven't registered yet, definitely go right now to www.itstimetogodeepsummit.com summit.com. If you're also just tuning in, be sure to go back and rewind to listen to the beginning of this podcast with Ms. Haley Simons or to watch because she's sharing this whole new discipline that most individuals are not familiar with. And as young as she is, she's very old in a sport. So we talked about the academics. We talked about her business. Now we're talking about her athleticism. So at 15, my question is, what hasn't she done? And so I'm excited to hear more about her um, advocacy in the community. You know, I think you mentioned you're the president of the NAACP Randallstown Youth Council. Can you tell us a little more about that? And what is it about that position and you being able to lead or have such a powerful position um, that what type of impact are you hoping to achieve and accomplish? I am very excited to have this position. I've had I've had the and the youth president's position for the Brandistown Youth Council for over a year now, and I do have one more year left, one more term left. But I'm very excited to hold this position because since the NAACP organization is such a big network. I am I am excited to be able to ex express express and share my voice with other with other youth that may be looking for an organization or a way to step out and become leaders themselves, but they don't know where to begin. So I like to use my position not to overpower people, but bring people in so that they can also feel and shared the same way that I do as a youth leader for, I don't even know, many years now. So I do like to, so I, to boil it all down, I love my position and I love to be able to express my voice, not just in my community, but also in the other networks that the NAACP offers. 
Absolutely. And, and well, and well shared. And so what are some of the issues that you, um, find that is, uh, important to youth that also fall in alignment with the values and the ethics of the NAACP. So what are some of those topics that you you take on or that you you continue to advocate for on behalf of the youth along with everyone else that you that's a part of your administration? Um, one of the topics that are very dear to me is youth leaders not having a platform that they can share the voice on. I do understand that being a youth leader, it does have its pros and cons. The pros is that they're able to fight for the topics that they're that are very dear to them, but the cons are that they're not being heard. And when they're trying to trying to find platforms and approach adults who want them to share the voice, youth leaders such as myself feel like they're not being heard. Um, another topic that I that is very aware or has brought up for youth my age is at least for me underserved and underrepresented communities because there are a lot of youth on the street these days that are turning to like drugs, gun, alcohol, cocaine, and I don't like to see my peep my um, the African American youth like me turn to such a bad place where I know that they they can get the help that they need. And since there are places that I feel like they call home that are being shut down due to not very sure of, and not them not being able to have a center or place that they can call home themselves. And yeah, I would have to say those are my two top topics. Absolutely. And you you speak very well. So kudos to you to want to be an advocate for other youth and hopefully help them tap into their leadership roles and to be advocates. And so um, as you are moving forward, um, what are your goals in life? Like, what do you want to do? You're, you're so close to graduation. Um, and you talked about this whole triathlon thing going into college. What what are your goals in life? Well, one of my goals in life is making sure that I'm waking up every morning because not many people this year have had the luxury of being able to see the next day or the next morning. So that is a goal of mine to making sure that I am waking up every day and I'm being very and I'm very thankful for God that He has gave me the opportunity to wake up every day because. I don't know. Um, another thing that I'm very, that a goal of mine in life is to just survive basically because people twice my age aren't, are, they have the skills that they need, but they're not applying it to the way that they want. And I'm very grateful at such a young age that I'm, that the skills that I have now, I'm able to apply it and use it as my career, my me as an advocate for my school, my business, this, that, and a third. And my last goal that I have in life is to pay back my mother because if it wasn't for her for 2020 when I started my business into 2021 this year as my business has grown successfully due to her because if it wasn't for her, I honestly do not think I would be here. I'm just going to put my foot down and just say it like that. Because honestly, she's my biggest advocate and like my biggest cheerleader. Because, you know, sometimes she would like want to scream and holler at me and she just want to put my head through a wall. But she knows deep down inside she loves me very much. And like I'm her mini twin. <laughs> like I'm her mini twin. So she knows that she can't do much to me. <laughs> and and um, I just... Honestly, honestly, I just want to pay her pay her back for when I do reach my ultimate goal in life. And so that she can have a nice, peaceful retirement um, plan. Cause she's like, she's like every day, woof. I guess my retirement plan coming early. So I'm like, okay, so I know what I gotta do. Um, and yeah, and just being able to have her supporting me every day and having me um be my cheerleader, my coach, my mentor. Um, helping me when I feel down, hyping me up when I'm up. And yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to meet your mom and tell her, don't put your head through a wall because that wouldn't be good. 
<laughs> so um, those are great. And do you have any aspirations of, you know, what do you want to major in college? You know, what do you want your right now? What, what would you like? What do you see yourself doing professionally? Are you going to continue your your business and, you know, any thoughts and in, in where are you hoping to uh, go to the next level? Um, my I do like to continue my business i want this is my full-time career of being a business owner and i will say man people twice my age you got lucky sometimes i just want to throw my head myself against the wall and sometimes i just want to scream and holler at someone because of how before starting my business how much time and effort it takes to actually run a full and successful business so kudos to us and you very, very much. <laughs> and um, there are two things that I would like to accomplish before I turn 30. Um, it would have to be, um, no, the the major I went to major in college is communications and um, it's communications um, because that's what I went to middle school for. And that's where, what I'm currently, currently um, what my current high school is is communication so i would love to continue that into high school and for my phd that i want to get um is also in communication but also in business as well because my mom she got her phd before i don't know how old she was but she got it at a very young age so i want to be able to match her as well and also get my phd as well so I can become the next Dr. Dorsey. I'm just saying, I'm just gonna put that out there. But <laughs> yeah, those are the two things that I want to do. Absolutely, that sounds like a smart cookie that you're trying to mimic behind. So kudos to have your aspirations of continuing your business and getting your PhD before 30. That's some smart moves. And so we talked about academics, we talked about your sport. We talked about your business. I want to come back to that for a second. We talked about your current aspirations. And, you know, let's just be real for a second. What a, you know, I'm pretty sure I'll, as you talked about, you're comparing your journey as an entrepreneur and as in a, in a youth to that of young adults and people older than you. And what are some of those things or what is an, a, a concern or two that, you kind of had to overcome in your journey um, from elementary to middle to high school that you feel that you are now seeing a big difference that have helped you across the spectrum of business and academics and sports and social. So what are, what are one or two things or just something in general that you felt that you needed to work on um, for you to get, get, get where you are today? Um, I would definitely have to say it will be mindset because for anyone who wants to, uh, um, we're not going to be just to kind of be talking to you, the audience and everyone personally, um, then we'll come back to me because we all know it's not all about you guys, it's about me mostly. But um, I will have to say um, your mindset because change, because if you want to change this change a certain way say for example you want to have a successful life or a successful business it's not starting on how you perceive things or look at things it's all about your mindset and it's all about training your mindset to get the things you want so that you can accomplish it and get over it and for me it was definitely my mindset because for a 14 year old who started out their business in the year 2020, when COVID hit, um, I didn't have very much um, resources I had since the whole world was basically shut down. And so I did have to train my mindset um, a little bit throughout my journey, still as an entrepreneur of saying, hey, you need to do this, that, and the third. And if you don't achieve these things, sometimes things are going to fall. You may might not want to get up. But knowing that for me that I've learned a lot of things throughout my entrepreneur year, I have been through trial and errors. Some were successful, some were um, not successful. But those things that were not successful, um, I took those as a learning experience and helped me become someone much more better and stronger mentally. So now at to a point when I first started my business, 
my mentor had to train me on what the business aspect is like. But now from starting from point A to point B, I have now I can fully say to myself, I can teach someone the aspects of a business, how to run it, what um how to run it, the what it's like backstage of a business, what are things you have to like mark um, marketing. Um, your image, this, that, and the third. And so my growth mindset from point A to point B has been very eye-opening for me. It has taught me some things in life that's not just about business when it comes to my school, education, um, my athletic athleticism, as you mentioned. And so, yeah. Yeah, and congratu con congratulations, very well stated. But I'm looking at your bio and it says that your, your business started in 2019. You keep saying 2020. Do you remember the um, Be More Healthy Expo where you launched your business in 2019? It was just so long ago. I'm sorry. It was so long ago. I feel like an old person by now. <laughs> DTD Urban Multisport Consulting Firm, formerly the Creative GRP limited liability company provides leadership training and business growth development to nonprofits, small businesses, entrepreneurs, and youth. DTD Urban Multisport Consulting Firm has been in existence post 15 years and is the seven-time recipient of the Baltimore Small Business Consulting Award, the 2016 recipient of the USCA Best of Baltimore Training Award, and was inducted into the Best of Baltimore Business Hall of Fame. DTD Urban Multisport Consulting Firm core values are 1. Innovation drives transformation 2. Vision drive change 3. Leadership transform results and 4. Advocacy increases awareness of needs To assist in the growth of its clients' business, DTD Urban Multisport Consulting Firm has an accredited online academy of workforce development, business and education, DTD Sports Academy for Urban Youth and a Deep Dive Academy. In addition to services such as business consulting, program development, instrument creation, operations management, leadership training and development, plus more. DTD Urban Multisport Consulting Firm elevates the leader within so that there is less micromanaging taking place in the boardroom, the training center, and the break room. No matter the phase or stage in business, an individual is DTD Urban Multisport Consulting Firm. We work with individuals just starting out to those that need business makeovers and areas in between. We work in specialty areas such as DEIA, training and development, persons with disabilities services, building communities, program development, and getting connected to the urban market. We serve the continental US and abroad online hybrid and in-person. Our staff encompasses over 200 years of knowledge, business, and experience, and we want to work with you. Book a free consultation now at www.urbanmultisportconsulting.com. So I take that as an absolute yes. And so um, kudos to even talking about the trial and errors and, and the success that you um, garnered over the last coming up one three years now, four years, I guess, in 2022. So it sounds like you definitely have learned a lot. Along the way, can you talk a little bit about the challenges that you went through in understanding business? And then at what point for you, if you can recall, when did it click to start making sense um, for you to start owning, you know, this whole thing called business and how overwhelming it could be um one challenge i will say would be putting in the time and effort because at first i was like oh okay it's just a business i can run this easily yeah no by like a week of me having my business i was like completely drained because of how much um time and effort i had to put into it to like making my logo making my website making my own banner um, you making all these social media account for my business to expand. And one, um, when it had clicked for me, I would have to say was when I got my first client for my prom pictures. 
And I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is a big deal. I got my first client. Hold on. The day that I found out that I got my um, first client in my business, I can't recall when it was. When, when, I, when I got my first client, I was very happy, super excited. I was thanking God and everything. I'm like, thank you, God, for giving these, this um, huge opportunity. I won't let you down. And the pictures came out perfect. I was very happy of how they came out. My client was very satisfied of how it came out. I got good reviews on it. And I think that was one point. And I think the other point which made me click, which made it click was when, when my coach and my mentor had taught me a new skill on how to take my emails from Outlook and um, my emails from Outlook and put them in an Excel spreadsheet so that I can email everyone all at once without taking so much time to email somebody, email one email, then another, then another, so on and so forth. And when she had explained to me that like, Haley, you were able for me, for me to teach you and then go and teach your brother the same thing without you needing my help. That's how you can tell that you have fully grasped and understand the side of business. Because if you can, take information like that and quickly apply it to teach someone else, you will be very successful. I'm going to be in retirement early. Yes, ma'am. So I guess that's when it really clicked for me. Yeah. And so, man, obviously you have a good teacher or you're just a good student or maybe both, right? And so um, kudos to you. And I see on your bio that you are a best-selling author and a podcaster. Tell us a little bit about that. So, yes, as you as you mentioned, I am a podcaster and a best-selling um, author. But my podcast is called Hales S. Every Mom Support Radio Podcast. And what I talk about on the show is about self-care, time management, organization, um, best um, tips to start off the school year right, um, what it's like being a student athlete, ways to overcome certain ob obstacles that you may have in life. And the two books that me and my brother wrote was number one, Empowering Triathletes. And number two, it was um, Thought Leader. I'm sorry. And that was the first book that we had wrote. Then the second book of Empowering Triathletes came. And both of those books are about how me and my brother grew up in the sport of triathlons to become and put where we are today. Yeah, so, and you're, you just turned 15. And so it looks like the sky is the limit for you. Um, I want to talk a little bit, and for those who are just tuning in again, if you are just watching this um, broadcast or listening to the podcast, we are speaking to VIP um, premier team speaker, Haley Simons. Um, the owner of Hales S Enterprises, she's 15 years old. You got to go back and watch this. You got to go back and listen to this. Not listen, not, not focus on her age, but listen to the wisdom that she's sharing. And she's very articulate and doing a great job. And um, she's dropping some nuggets for not just youth entrepreneurs out there, but in comparison to um, a few adults that can definitely learn a few things. Um, as she's continuing to grow, um, my next question to Haley is, you mentioned that you are, oh, and it's on your, your bio, you're one of only two youth in the world that your official business is a part of a local and state chamber of commerce. How is it, um, describe how, how are things when you walk into a networking breakfast um, at the local chamber? Like, you know, were you nervous? Do you, have you learned to network? You know, do do the business owners look at you crazy or do you feel that they accept you? And um, what are your thoughts on being able to be an owner and be amongst peers way older than you are? So at first, when I was when I went to my first chamber breakfast, I was kind of nervous because it's my first time doing a net being at a place where I can network and expand my business. But as the time went on of going to each of the breakfast, chamber breakfast networks, each month that they hold, I think the first or second week of the month on a Thursday, 
And at first, it, I was kind of nervous, but as I eased, gradually got used to it, I started to become more comfortable of it. And I got so comfortable that one of the um, business owners that are, that, were, that are always there, like all the time, everywhere I went, she had walked up to me and she said, Haley, it's so nice to see you now more comfortable speaking and networking about your business and being able to network with others. And when she had told me that, First of all, that made my day. And secondly, that just that's that can just explain there of how youth my age can do the things that most adults can't do twice my age because we have been doing this for so long. And I also can rock my suit there as well. Even if it's a new one or old one, it's not like they would know anyways because we have it almost like every month. So I can be able to rock off my suit. And plus, if it's a school day too, I can rock my suit off at school as well. So that's kind of hitting two birds with one stone for me. So, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and so, you know, we are so excited to have you as a part of the platform. And then we're, we're, it also says, you you know, you're, you have speaking, uh, you, you've spoken at other um, summits. And how has, spe how has speaking, you know, as a part of a larger summit and just being international and being on a platform with others, and showing what you could do. How has this experience been for you? It has been a very interesting and exciting experience for me because as, as now a speaker who has been speaking for very long, um, I will say these um, speaking engagements that I have done in the past have been my first international speaking um, gigs. So it's not just exposing me to people in my area, but it's exposed, but my business and me are being exposed to a lot of people around the world so that they know who I am, what I do, and what I am capable of doing at such a young age. And, and, and that's phenomenal. And do you feel that with you and other youth um, breaking through on these platforms could really open the door? hopefully for other youth as well, being a part of adult events and not just youth-centered programs? Yes, definitely. As a youth, I think it does give me an opportunity to open doors for other youth like me that want to become inspiring business owners, or they already are business owners, but they just can't find a way to, or don't know how to expand their business worldwide. Um, it does give me the opportunity to open doors so that they can share the same platform as me, so they think they can get the same exposure and experience that I do as well. Whew. I don't even know where to start. I feel like I need to write a book about you or something. Maybe that's coming in 2022. We'll see. And so as we're wrapping this up, what are ways, well, I have one additional question. What are some ways that other business owners or the, the community can help today's youth to also tap into their skill set so that they can feel more empowered? One way that they can for youth that want to tap into their business, but they don't know where to begin. I have a business academy called Hales S Business Academy, where like you just mentioned, mentioned before, I um, teach other youth or um, other inspiring business owners or youth that want to know how to network or expand their business and they don't know where to begin. That's what my business, that's what my business academy offers. And once they exit out of my academy, they won't just know how to run a business successfully, but I mean, they won't know how to run a business, but they also know how to run it successfully, know how to network with other people, market with other people, and being able to set a goal that they have for their business, achieve it, accomplish it, and then move on to the next goal that they have so that they're they have this successful business that they can have underneath their belt and possibly have it for a career as for them as well. Wow, I just love how you put that shameless plug in there about your business academy, because we didn't talk about that before, but uh, definitely nice to know. Um, and so what words of wisdom, uh, Ms. Haley Simons, would you share to youth 
and adults out there um, as you continue on your journey, but definitely to inspire and to motivate um, them so that they too can continue to not just uh, say what they want, but do what they want. One advice that um, that I would give them is, is all about training and changing your mindset. If you want to become a better version of yourself every day, say if you see yourself having a nice and peaceful life and you don't want to have any troubles in your life, it's all about changing your mindset. Because if you can change your mindset and maintain it and be able to you be met, not just mentally strong, but physically as well, then you can do almost anything that you put your mind to. I will just say it's all about changing your mindset because if you can train your mindset to do the things that you want and accomplish the things that you want, the sky's the limit. So that's the one advice I would give to them. Very well stated. And where can people uh, learn about your book or listen to your podcast or? reach out to you? How can they get in touch with the young uh, Miss Simons? They can reach me on all my social media platforms on YouTube, Facebook, and on my website. My YouTube and Facebook is Health S Enterprises. And you can also go to my website at www.healthsenterprises.com. And if you would like to contact me personally, make sure there's um, email me at info at healthsenterprises.com. So I am super excited to have you on. And we have to bring you back for part two once this summit is over and see where you are with your goals in 2022. By the way, I absolutely love your background. That blue and blue is popping. I see your pearls. So you're definitely representing for our young ladies today. And so we are excited to see not just what Miss Haley Simons has to offer in this interview, but to learn more about what she has to share from a youth perspective, not just a youth in, in age, but a business owner, an activist, a leader, you know, an athlete, you know, getting things done in the classroom and on the field. And now on international platforms, it's a lot that we're learning from our youth during the segment, which is why they are part of the It's Time to Go Deep Summit. So I encourage you again, if you're just tuning in to go back and watch this show, go back and rewind this podcast, download, connect with her, connect with all of our speakers and all of our youth, but most importantly, sign up today at www.itstimetogodeepsummit.com. I'm super excited to bridge gaps in areas that we need. And it's not all about us. It's all about you because we are here to serve, to lend a greater impact. And most importantly, to leave the legacy that is required of us by our ancestors. So this is Dr. Takima Dorsey on DTV's Urban Multisport Radio and Podcast Show, where it's all about advocacy, leadership, vision, and innovation. And we look forward to another exciting podcast and show coming down the road on this Road to the Deep Dive Summit. Until then, have a great day. Continue to live, love, and laugh and put that mask on because this Omicron variant is on its way. We look forward to seeing you later. And until then, have a great day.